OnlyFans. Hey, who the hell are you? Wait, I'm, I'm, leave, you. I'm hey, going. Shoot, I'm, I'm sorry. Shoot, I'm going. Oh, I'm gross. Leaving. Goddamn squatters. <sighs> OnlyFans. A platform where creators and celebrities can sell exclusive content to their fans for a simple monthly subscription fee. Said content might range from the innocuous swimsuit pic all the way to incredibly specific pornographic videos involving human feet I'm sure many would regard as sacrilegious. Not that... Not that I've seen those videos. Whoever you're following or whatever you're looking for on OnlyFans, it's almost always the case to be somewhat sexual in nature. Which is why it was very strange when the company made the decision to ban all sexual content on the platform this time last year. A policy reversed in only six days after everyone universally said, you sure about that? But today, OnlyFans is thriving with stats showing users spending some $4.8 billion on the site in the last year alone. And of course, in any profitable marketplace selling an honest product or service, there will always be 20 something year old Dude bros looking to make money off of it without all that gross icky work stuff. Enter the douchiest OnlyFans pimps on this side of the Miami River. Closer look agency. Huh, you dropped out of college with your best friend and became millionaires by 22. Course coming soon. These two super cool guys are named Spencer McManus and Grant Ganley. And they co-own an OnlyFans agency together that takes a cut from OnlyFans creators in exchange for growing their accounts. And may I just point out what alpha chad last names these two have? McManus and Ganley? No fake middle names needed here, Jeremiah Bowl Evans. These two have built-in natural warrior title names that kind of make me want to change my own to something cooler. Like, like Gunner Gargantuan. Yeah, yeah, that has a nice ring to it. Anyways, Spencer and Grant make a lot of money stealing from women on OnlyFans. I'm sorry, I meant managing women on OnlyFans. Now, I can't see their financials, so I can't say for sure if they're millionaires or not, but boy, do they like to tell us they are with constant flexing on their socials. Often showing their table at the club, their fancy sports cars, or for some reason, their money counting machine. Don't know why you need that. Isn't your entire business online? Why is there cash involved? You know you're not actually pimps, right? Oh, no, they don't know that. Oh, I see the problem now. Yo, Spence, why do you have a third phone? People just don't do that. It's simple, really. I'm not fucking people. Oh, shit. Brr, are we in the Arctic? That was the coldest thing I've ever seen. It's simple, really. I'm not fucking people. I'm not fucking people, all right? Well, I mean, I am fucking people. I I do fuck. I'm not fucking people. I'm not those people. I'm I'm not those fucking people. I I'm not I'm not fucking people. I Grant, can we reshoot it? And I love how this girl just comes in the frame like he just spawned her there because of this sick one-liner. Hey, let's get out of here, babe. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, right there in the screen. So you know I'm not lucky and I see my hundred dollar bill remind myself how rich I am. And also you can see my best friend and my business partner Grant right there. It looks good, my man. Thank you. Chef, what we got for me today? What's up, Mr. Spencer? Oh, today we got some Wagyu. Oh, We're gonna make yes. some fire. Man, man. Oh, appreciate you. A look into a piece of my day living as a millionaire in Miami. Yep, supernatural day in the life of a millionaire. Just happened to be caught on camera. This is definitely how millionaires talk and interact with people. Picture hanging guy because that's a job I can't be bothered to do. That's perfect. Right next to the $100 drop shipped Etsy canvas to remind myself I'm a piece of shit. And this one because that's my best friend and business partner Grant. I love him in our snuggles. Hey chef, what's cooking? Wagyu? It better only be from those newborn baby cows that suffer greatly. You know that's I like it. The flexing doesn't stop there, it's their entire pages, but there's something so funny about the fact that while they seem desperate to portray themselves as tough macho thugs, their entire business at the end of the day is social media growth for OnlyFans girls, something you never actually have to leave your home to do. Yet they flex in the douchiest way possible as if they're a GTA character running the city. Three years ago I had a dream I ran the biggest OnlyFans agency in the world. <laughs> okay. Did you achieve it? This B-roll isn't really proof. It's just kind of you on a boat with some girls wasting singles as they're surely going into the water behind you. Something you might have noticed so far about these boys is that they're huge Andrew Tate fans. Shocking news that no one saw coming. This information has rattled me to my core. Aw, look at them smoking cigars and sipping on whiskey on the rocks while wearing shades indoors. That's so their own personality. We're like Batman and Robin, but we scale OnlyFans creators' pages. So nothing like that, man and Robin. <laughs> Except there's two of you, I guess. And maybe one of you calls the other daddy from time to time. Here's a POV of Grant pretending he knows how to play chess. Because that's something Tate's also good at. And surprise, surprise, you go to their TikTok pages and they're giving the same delusional, ego-driven takes as if Andrew Tate is physically in their tiny little brains, pulling tiny levers around to speak through them. Hey brother, saw your TikTok about getting money. How easy is it? 
Well, I mean, for me, life's been pretty fucking easy. Um, I'm 6'3", I'm jacked, uh, I'm obviously good looking, as you guys can see. I'm already at seven figures and I'm 24, really haven't been doing this that long. Um, Pick the most fun career. I'm not a nerd, I'm not gonna sit there at a computer all day. I don't code, I don't do anything. You know, I just look good for the cameras, I do my thing, I scale businesses, and I work with really pretty women. So, you know, for me it's really easy. You know, for you guys, the plebs, the plebeians. The plebs, the plebeians, right, yeah. Those are words you use often. Sure. And nothing exudes more confidence than incredibly shifty eye contact while you boast about your achievements. I'm 6'3", I'm jacked, Uh, I'm obviously good looking. Obviously good looking? Calm down, ROTC. What's great is you can really tell he's just being himself here, and I love that for him. That's a joke, this is worse acting than amateur porn. How ironic. Wanna be Tate so bad. Who? Nice cover up, Grant. Pretend you don't know who that is. Who? <laughs> I've never heard of uh, this Tate person or, or object. I, I mean, are you talking about a small wrinkly fruit? Do you mean a date? <laughs> what is a Tate? <laughs> Sorry, I blacked out for a moment there. I went too deep as a character. LMAO, Tate wannabe. And he replies the, the face palm emoji like, like, oh, you're so stupid. No. But then go only a month back in his TikToks and he'll tell you straight up, these are the MFs I look up to. Who is that? I, did my did my account get hacked? I do not remember posting this. Or we could take a look at another Spencer McManus TikTok where he outright quotes Tate. You need to get jacked. Look, before I knew how to make any fucking money, first thing I did was I got jacked. And what did this do? I used to push carts at the supermarket. And I used to work at Moe's Southwest Grill cleaning fucking bathrooms all night like a loser. But physically, I was stronger, bigger, more vascular, and better than my bosses and everybody that I used to fucking work with. So why would I push carts and make minimum wage like a scrub while the guy ahead of me, who was still a scrub, Right, but he's a supervisor, made more money than me. Tate says it very well, right? Strong body, strong mind. You psychologically think that you're better than these people and you think that you deserve to make more money than them, which is true, right? First off, why is there a stack of cash in front of you? Are we doing a deal? Second, what dumbass will quote Tate for strong body, strong mind? That proverb's been around for centuries. Third, you didn't even extract the right meaning from it and use it as justification to think you're better than people because you can lift heavy bars up and down. You psychologically think that you're better than these people and you think that you deserve to make more money than them, which is true. I think it's pretty obvious that they're bandwagoning off of Tate deliberately, but was the goal to get bullied by someone like me online for attention or did they actually just become tiny tates because they can't think for themselves both explanations are pretty sad and pathetic to think about but if your goal was attention congrats you got it how's your soul doing are you empty inside with the spotlight on you now i'll do my best to metaphorically pelt tomatoes at you during your performance because lord knows you deserve it so let's take a closer look at closer look agency their only fans business that he just claimed was super easy for him saw your tiktok about getting money how easy is it well i mean for me Life's been pretty fucking easy. But then post other TikToks that make it seem like it was actually a really hard grind to the top. Everyone sees the final result, but not what it took to get there. Wow, I mean, look at all those books and pictures of your computer with stock graphs. You're really putting those reps in. And while they'll inevitably make a course charging Nelt Boy fans thousands of dollars to learn the business, I can break down their strategy for free into three simple steps. One, credibility. Two, acquisition. Three, marketing. Welcome to Business 101. I'm your professor, Gunnar Gargantuan. If you expect to make it in this industry, you can't be a nobody. Well, actually you can, but you have to make it look like you're not. I'll let Spencer explain. I bought a McLaren when I was 21. Why did I do that? Somebody messages me about let's work, let's do business. I look at their profile and they don't have a fucking supercar or they look like they're not up. Like I will never respond to that message. And it's just human psychology. It's nothing about being disrespectful or it's nothing about like not talking to somebody or because they look poor. It has nothing to do with that, but you just gotta to realize that's the way that the world works. Okay, step one, students. And I want you to write this down. After you leave class today, you're immediately going to go out and purchase a supercar. How do you expect anyone to want to do business with you if you're not up? Of course, in actuality, you will be down hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, but we're gonna make that back, okay? I was able to sign hundreds and hundreds of clients, close hundreds and hundreds of deals, because I had the car as a testimonial, a proof of my worth as an entrepreneur. I've earned this, I know how to make money. You gotta spend money to make money, that's just good business. Hold up, looking back at the flexing now, are they currently successful or was this just step one of the plan? I had to find out, so I started looking around for clues and I stumbled upon a lead when I saw this TikTok on Spencer's second page, McManus Wisdom. I really just bought the penthouse at the age of 23. What are you doing? 
A simple claim, really. Not too much to work with. Here, wrong. Dead wrong you'd be, as you forgot my old job before Moist Critical gave me my entire YouTube career. Bless up, Charlie. You can name my firstborn. But I was a real estate agent, specifically in Miami, and I recognize this building. I won't dox the man and say the name of it, but here's footage from their website. You can see the two towers with a conjoined bridge, the pool and hot tub layout are the same. And in his other TikTok, where he claims the unit is worth $5 million and strangely refers to himself in the third person, you can see the metro rail running below it just as it does here. So what, Gunner? You figured out where he lives. Pretty creepy video segment. On the contrary, it's still kind of creepy, but it's important because I'm pretty sure this building only does rentals. Please hold while I try to connect you. Hi, Julie. This is Gunnar Gargantuan. I had a quick question. I saw uh, someone online say that they bought the penthouse unit in the North Tower for $5 million. But I had a quick question. Are you guys only rentals or do you guys also sell units? We don't sell units. That's a total lie. Okay. Units All right. Are still on the market right now for rent. Okay. I just wanted to double check that. I figured. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Shocked, betrayed, devastated I was. Them telling us to buy supercars and they can't even afford to purchase a penthouse? Pfft, fucking plebs. The best thing you guys should know is when you go to manage someone, you need credibility, right? And so that's what school does. You know, you graduate, it gives you the illusion of credibility. Um, so that's what you're gonna do through this one. So the illusion of credibility is what we're after. Got it. Like your accounts being fake verified with artificial likes and views like that? Like, is that what we're talking about? For those of you that don't know, it's actually pretty easy to get verified on TikTok or Instagram if you have about $10,000 burning a hole in your pocket. It used to be you pay for a few fake articles about you online and boom, blue check mark. But Instagram caught on. YouTuber Spencer Cornelia just did a great video about this, but the most recent scheme was to pretend to be a musical artist on Spotify and pay for artificial listens like Spencer and Grant did. Spencer had hit songs such as Savage Society, War With Us, and Internet Money, classics. I'm personally a bigger fan of Grant's music with his songs GG's, Internet Mafia, and my favorite, the Pimpin' Ain't Easy remix. I don't know what they're remixing. I must have missed the original Pimpin' Ain't Easy. Now, they do have to submit real songs to Spotify, but they don't have to be good, mostly just shitty garage band beats they pay someone on Fiverr to make in five minutes. Here, I'm gonna read Grant's Spotify bio while I play the the Pimpin' Ain't Easy remix. Grant Ganley manages to keep churning out one hit after another without fail or fatigue. The musical genius answers that when you truly love and are passionate about what you do, everything else just falls into place by itself. Another wholly fascinating quality about Grant Ganley music is that it's unique, yet something that anyone from any walk of life can relate to. His music transcends all boundaries of time, distance, and language, and touches hearts in the remotest corners of the world as people hum and groove to his beats, captivated by their haunting depth and beauty. Truly poetic stuff. I almost shed a tear reading that one. So you got the sports car, the penthouse, and now you're verified. What's the next step, professor? You're gonna need to start reaching out to OnlyFans creators and signing them onto your agency. Typically, this is done through DM outreach and setting up calls, but a little TikTok advertising couldn't hurt. So this is where the flexing comes into play. Show your future clients that this is the lifestyle you lead and that you know what you're doing. Join the family. Aw, what a precious way of saying we're gonna need to see you naked on camera. Look, people are grown-ups and they can make their own decisions on which businesses they choose to do or not. But it's a bit weird to be specifically searching out women that that are currently working nine to five jobs and not the women already on OnlyFans. They also do these fake little sketch advertisements also seemingly aimed at women not already in the business. Yo, what's up, man? Hey. Where you been? Hello. I got something for you. No way, what's this from? Your website. You're lying. No. Wait, where are you going? Back to the mall. Oh shit. Why did it sound like he finished when she said she was going to the mall? Back to the mall. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> Come on, Spencer, where's the professionalism? Also, for the who knows how many times I'll ask this time, why are they getting paid in all cash? In a vacuum sealed Ziploc bag of cash, mind you. Someone investigate their business because it looks like something else is going on here. The caption on this one reads, when she finally joined the agency. <gasps> kind of implying that if you join our agency, I, I mean, join our family that you could also be making 40K a month. It's so easy. Hey, excuse me. I like your car. What do you do for a living? I'm a model. A model? Model for what? Close to look agency. Oh, snap. Close to look agency. I heard of them before, but what exactly do you do? I work with them to grow my social media. Social media? Influencers don't make that much money. Boy, 
This I made from last week. Oh my, how much is that? 40K. I gotta go. Uh uh, okay. In this one, she just said she made 40k in the last week. And fans, the cash that she left wide open, by the way, with her window down. Lady, I think you might want to find yourself an actual pimp because that shit's getting stolen. So do their clients actually make that much money? I honestly don't know. They'll show payment receipts ranging from $1,000 to $200,000 a month. Of course, we have no way of actually knowing if those pics are from their own accounts or not. But with the whole fake penthouse thing, I'm a little skeptical. I just think it's shitty to advertise and act like anybody can make it in this business when a very small minority of OnlyFans creators make any money at all. But say they entice some woman with this proposition, then she can go to this call form where she can fill in her information, which for some reason asks her to put in her street address, and they can reach out and make the clothes, I guess. I like this part of the form, which reads, who referred you to Closer Look? And you could choose from a list of dudes' names that looks like the starting lineup of the Junior Varsity Adirondacks Deer Hunting Club. Except this one guy named Quotient? Is that a real fucking name? <laughs> Yeah, Quotient. Yeah, I know him. He runs in the same circles as uh, Summon Product, the boys. Anyways, you got your first client. What's next? It's time to get the word out and make some conversions, and it seems their strategy involves exploiting the boundaries of any given social platform. For instance, on TikTok, that means non-stop thirst trap posting of their different clients all over their fake verified accounts. One of them being Woman World with 9.3 million followers, another being Simp Sanctuary with 3.1 million followers, which actually at the time of recording this video, they have now deleted all their TikToks and changed their profile picture. And at the time of recording and editing this video, the account's gone. I guess the TikTok feds we're getting too close. And then here's a new one they just launched called Bunny University. I don't know exactly what the strategy is for fake TikTok verification, but I think it has something to do with the fact that this new account shows 25.4 million likes and has like seven TikToks doing sub 10,000 views. All I know is Grant advertises to sell verified TikTok accounts on his Instagram for $10,000 plus. DM him. Anyways, from these TikTok accounts, they'll funnel people to their respective Instagram accounts, which funnels back to the Closer Look Instagram account, which funnels back to the Closer Look OnlyFans page, and now I see a penis. Okay, here's the Closer Look agency page. That is... that is porn. And there's immediately porn. At this point, you're gonna wanna have hired virtual assistants, often dudes, who will pretend to be your OnlyFans creator, DMing other guys that subscribe to try to get more money out of them. It's predatory, borderline false advertising, and weird as hell, but it's a standard in the business. And you, you greedy bastard, get to hire them for just $5 an hour because they often live in very remote poor countries. So congrats, students, you've passed my class. If you follow these steps, you too can be a human piece of garbage, but remember, you can now afford to have have your name held up by bottle girls that live Miami, so I guess it was all worth it. Anyways, that's the video today, pimps. Be sure to like, subscribe, thrust that notification bell, and please, 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 please go to my second channel, Gunner TV Live. I'm uploading weekly edited videos there from my Twitch streams, also at Gunner TV Live, while these videos on the main channel take some time to produce. So I'd appreciate it if you check them out. I think you'll enjoy them. With all that said, I'm gonna go meet up my buddy Quotient. I heard this full name difference is trying to start some shit. Good day. I'm coming, Quotient. I'm coming, buddy. Don't move too slow Fine line between